Welcome back to Dark Corners Undead. It's been a while. It's been even longer since we did an actual new one. Yes, that made its way up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. We just seemed to get behind. We got out of the habit of doing these, and now we're trying to get back into the habit, and uh, and and I'm already waffling. That's it. We're trying to trying to create a structure for these uh, yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So Make we've them got, about something. So now we've got sort of chapters. What are our chapters? Our chat. Should we should we should I announce them all? Or should yes, we just and then if you're bored, you can I'll put links in below, and you can jump okay. to the next chapter. Okay. It's um a chapters are updates. Oh. Uh, new comments. Ooh. Viewers vote. Ooh. Hard corner of the month. Ah. Discussion. Ooh. And viewers channel. Ooh. Okay, so if any of those take your fancy, watch it all of it, but yeah. you could also jump ahead. All right, so chapter one. Updates. Okay, go. What have we got? Uh, well, we're both, we're each working on drag, on vampire stuff at the moment. I'm working on our Hammer Dracula special, which will be the first of our Dracula specials and the next in our our run of franchises. It's been a little while since we had a franchise one out. Yes. So, in fairness, this is a largest one. There are nine films. Yes. Um, I've watched. I mean, I've watched. I think I've watched them all now, um, but I haven't watched them all for this. Oh, I've no. Oh no. I, I mean, I mean for myself. You haven't. Oh, you've seen all of them. Except one, actually. You know what? I'll take that bit again. For the purposes of this um, of this special, I've now watched I think the first six. Um, yeah, I've got yeah. So I've got to. I've just watched Scars of Dracula. So I've got uh, seventy-two A.D. Yeah. Satanic rites and Legend of the Golden Vampire, uh, Vampires to go. Cool. So and it's coming along well. I'm, and I'm also reading Christopher Lee's biography, and we're trying to tie in a bit about Christopher Lee's life into this and uh, as we did with the Hammer Frankenstein try and make it into a, a dual yes. uh, story. Now before you get too excited about this being out next week no, or anything no. like that I think our order is we've got March we've got the Murno April is going to be the Star Wars one then May is going to be one of yours Corman or Dracula before it'll be Corman right so then it'll be Dracula those updates, that's the updates for this month. Because these are going to be monthly. Yes. No, well, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, new comments. New yeah. comments. All right. Comments. So kind of what I thought was interesting is that sometimes people write comments underneath the Quite videos. Quite a lot, in fact, um, these days. We expect a minimum of like 50 comments in the first week. We got 50 comments already on Red, Yeah, yeah. This one's so got Weasels, quite a lot. Weasels went up last night and we already have 50 comments on it. One of which was... Did this film really sample Queen's Get Down, Make Love during that murder scene? So I'm going to play this scene now and you decide. Okay. No. Ah! I can hear why. I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. The next, the next comment I'd like to present to you is I'm not going to tell you what review this is from, so I want you to guess. Somebody commented on this review. You don't get it. Review something like Notting Hill, in brackets, Julia Roberts instead. And I have to guess what reviews that uh, that's yes. on. Yes. How? That has that, that has nothing to do with any of the reviews. You don't get it. Well, um, I don't know, Zardos. That's usually the one that you don't get. You're quite right, but it's not. In fact, this one is from Silent Night, Deadly Night. Well, we, we said during the review that there are people who... who that that's one that people over-defend. As we said, with the video nasties tends yeah. to be a thing. I mean, if I'm honest, it kind of sounds like you don't get the channel. <laughs> yeah. We don't really do um, romantic comedies. Almost, I, I, I'd go so far as to say never. No, I don't think we've done all comedies for that matter. Well, we've done a few. Have we? Well, Rockula, that's a romantic comedy. Yeah, but, um, the Hillbilly one, there's a few. There's a musical as well. Yeah, they're both musicals. Yes, that's a, that's a, but we haven't done like a full-on romantic comedy. No. 
Anyway, um, um, I, 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 I don't know if this is this is his, but I think Notting Hill is a good film. So this other one I thought was kind of interesting, which is about um, Island of Terror, which is yes. uh, Peter Cushing. It's an odd review that actually gets a lot of comments. I think it's just on TV a lot, and then people look it up afterwards to find more information about it and get our review. <laughs> but anyway, this person's put: If anyone was able to see the movie when it was first released in theaters, you would know that the first autopsy of Ian Bellows performed by Dr. Landers and Constable Harris, was the scariest part of the entire movie, and for some reason has been edited out. Multiple explanation marks. Dark Corner's reviewer, he means you, please tell me you saw this in the movie theatre, and you remember seeing the first autopsy of Ian Bellows. On the DVD and TV versions, all you see is Ian Bellows' corpse, already covered at the conclusion of the first autopsy. Slightly distressed that I apparently look old enough to have seen this in the cinema. <laughs> I may be reeling from that for the rest of this. Uh, no, I didn't see it in the cinema, you. Uh, uh, and no, I, I had no idea that anything was cut. It does seem, I, obviously stuff was cut for various reasons, but usually th these days that footage is, it has been put back in. I don't know if people just don't feel that this is a popular, that this is a film that it's worth putting the footage back in, or I don't think it was a major release, so the footage just may not exist anymore. It just gets lost, isn't it? Yeah. It sometimes happens. These days without, back then, before the days of DVD releases, if you cut something, that, that, that it didn't really have a life beyond that. We're very lucky when stuff does survive. Yes. You know, we've talked, that, we've talked about this before, that for, for, for whatever, whatever we've gained or lost over the years, the fact that Films that have been unfairly cut now have a second life on DVD is a really good thing. Yes. And sometimes it proves that the studios were right. Yeah. But um, in this case, I've no idea what would have happened. Yeah, so I guess you know, it gets cut because maybe for international markets and then that print then becomes the one that they use for TV and DVD. And, and then nobody ever, you know, there's no financial worthwhile digging through the archives to find a scene. No, that's, no. Um, that's needed. I'd say if you go back uh, and link it uh, on screen now, where, where we talk about the restoration of films, and it's one of the bits in there that I like is the extra scenes in Psycho in the German version, yeah. where you see a bit more blood and stuff like that, yeah. which is just still sits around in the German version, but has never been restored back into the original print, and presumably that's closer to Hitchcock's vision. So there you go. So yeah, I think we're just so with this undead, we we'll highlight comments that we think are kind of interesting, especially on older videos, because who goes back to look at those? And sure, I do read every Not comment me. that people write. So uh, I read many of them. <laughs> But you know, because I, well, I, well, I don't get notifications yeah. when they come in, so I'm not going to go and check through 300 yes, you're, you're videos every through, day. Yes, you'll sit through the latest reviews. I read reading. all the ones that come out in the first week. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, moving week. on. Uh, next topic was uh, the viewer's vote, I think. Viewer's so, vote. Right. Go on, you can explain where these come from. Uh, yeah, well, we like our, uh, um, we used to do votes, films, lists of films for you to vote on which we do not so much that we do next, but which we prioritize. You remember how this works if you've watched these before, way back when. And we tried to theme them, but that was too much trouble. So <laughs> these are all um, rec um, recommendations that came from one of our Patreon subscribers, or Dark Cult, as we prefer to, so to if refer you, to. If them. you come in as a shadow, one if of you the perks you get level, is to pick a, a film for us to review. Now, yeah. the Blue Room has come in with four given us a choice. Yes. And so now we're passing that choice on to you. Exactly. That's a much better explanation. Yeah. So um, these are the, the, the four films that Blue Room has um, recommended. So we have Maniac, 1934. A former vaudevillian gifted at impersonation assists a mad scientist in reanimating corpses and soon goes mad himself. I really like that it's a former vaudevillian. Yes. When you when you come out of the juggling game, you go straight into mad science. This was your favourite. It was. I just um, like the description. I the part of that worries me is 1934. Yeah, That's, yeah. I don't know that we've done. 
there's a couple that are back that far and they don't get good views. Yes, and the prints don't tend to be very good. Often not. I knew I knew this was a problem, but that would based on purely on the description, that so was So bear favorite. in mind. Although if you want to see what the print looks like, it is on YouTube. Uh, second, Swamp Women from 1956. An undercover policewoman helps three female convicts escape from prison so they can lead her to a stash of stolen diamonds hidden in a swamp. You see, the interesting thing about that was I read the description before the date right. and thought that sounds like the description of like uh, an exploitation, like a women in prison exploitation film. Mm -hmm. And then I thought 1956 and thought, okay, no, it's not that. And I'm wondering if that's really, if it falls completely within our I think wheelhouse. it's also a bit of a trick in saying swamp women. Or swamp yeah, women. yeah, the title. And then, it's, and then it's not really a swamp woman. No, disappointing. Number three is Rawhead Rex, which is a title I certainly knew. And that's 1986. Ireland will never be the same after Rawhead Rex, a particularly nasty demon, is released from his underground prison by an unwitting farmer. Oh, we've never done a film from Ireland before. I mean, I don't know if it was made in Ireland. I assume it was. I don't know if it's an Irish film company, but... It'd be weird, I like the title. It'd be weird to set it in Ireland and not have it filmed in Ireland. I'm sure it's filmed in Ireland. I just wasn't sure if it was uh, like a specific yeah, Irish okay, production yeah. company. You know, at the beginning I said, let's not get sidetracked. Yes, um, let's get sidetracked. <laughs> but let's get sidetracked. The Favourite. Is that an English Big film? Big sidetrack. Um, I think it's a co-pro, but mostly English, yeah. And one of the podcasts I was listening to about it being included into the AFI's top 100 films. Not necessarily, does it deserve to be? And they didn't really touch on the fact that you've got these films like Harry Potter or even Lord of the Rings is in the AFI top 100. But in what way is it an American film when it's filmed in New Zealand with a New Zealand director, producer, Sorry. writer? Is the AFI's top 100? It's not America. top 100 films. It's specifically for American yes. films. Yes. Oh, okay. Just uh, I, I have... I don't know. I mean, usually, these days, money comes from wherever you can get it from, and a bulk of it comes from America. But that's it, yeah. It just seems like is, is the production company American, and that's the clincher? What do you think makes a film a film from that country. I mean, to be honest, I don't care where the film comes from um, as long as it's a good film. Um, I think it's silly to get proprietorial yeah. about it. I don't know. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, the stars are, two of the stars are English. The direct, I'm not sure. Is Yorgos Lanthimos Greek? Yeah. Um, I suppose it has to be about the production company. That's who yeah. made it. And then everybody else's talent being brought in by that company. You know, we talk about Hammer films, our British films, but yes. of course some of the, we're talking about Crater Mass in a bit. One of the, the star of the original Crater Mass films is American because they thought they needed an American star. And that's the case of a lot of British films at the time. They were importing yeah. talent, but we know they are British films. Mm. I suppose there's a question of where does that stop? And when you have other production companies involved, do you just say who's given the most money? It's a shame when a film's nationality is defined by its money. money. That, I suppose, is a problem. And we don't have studios like we used to, where it's just like everybody in this building. This building represents the studio. Now yes. studios are more yeah. everywhere. So I don't really know. I, I, that's not an answer. I don't know what an answer is. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that was about Rawhead Rex, if you can remember back that far. Um, the last option you can vote on is The Suckling. From 1990. I think also subtitled Savage Baby. I don't know if that's there. <laughs> a woman goes to a back alley abortion clinic only to have her aborted fetus attack her, her boyfriend and everyone else at the clinic. I've got to be honest, that's the sort of description that raises kind of a flag for me. It just sounds like I'm just going to find it distasteful. <laughs> what part of that do you find distasteful? I don't understand. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a weird quirk of mine. Okay, so, uh, yeah, drop your uh, votes uh, yeah. in the comments below. Whichever of those you'd like us to prioritise as our, not exactly our next, but... Uh, be in our next batch, yeah, for sure. Yeah, in our next batch, then vote in the comments below. Cool. Um, next topic. What was the next topic? Was it um, Hard Corner of the Month? Let's do Hard Corner of the Month. Let's do Hard Corner of the Month. Yes. We haven't done this for even longer than we've done a... I'm dead. I know, we sort of fell out of the habit because it was always so much trouble to look someone up, which, to be honest, isn't that much trouble, so really we should be doing it. So, the cover to title of Hard Corner of the, the Month the goes to... The problem is because we don't think about it until right before we do this, yeah. and then we're like, oh my God, who are going to pick? Whoever commented last. But in this case, <laughs> we have put thought into it, and the coveted title goes to Queen Glamazona. Yes. 
Graham told me how to pronounce that, so it's almost certainly wrong. Um, who only discovered the channel recently, but just watched everything. Just, just blitz for it. So yeah, I saw... So I may not I be saw, watching anymore. Saw, yeah, my, my, I'm done with it. Watched the videos that they liked and moved on. But I saw a lot of comments coming in throughout loads of videos. And that's it's usually yeah. a flag that you're a hard corner. Yeah, so Queen Glanazona is our hard corner of the month. Yes. Congratulations. We'll be bringing this back for realsies. Yeah. Now. Into, uh, the next uh, discussion, <laughs> if we haven't already done that. Yes, just discussion. So we're talking about... So I wanted to talk about um, the, the, there's two potential... Re I think it's the, it is the first time that this has happened, that the two predominant horror studios of the past that we think about are rebooting films at the same time, in that... Obviously, Universal has been rebooting a lot. The most recent one they've announced is The Invisible Man to be yeah. directed by Lee Wanell. But Hammer has now announced that they're rebooting Quatermass. And this is the first time that Hammer's rebooted a film since their um, the Hammer Rises Again, whatever they call it, um, since, yes. the, since the studio was reinvented in, uh, it was about 15 years ago? Yeah. Something like that, around, around the turn of the millennium. And um, Quatermass is the one that they've chosen. And I... I I wanted to talk about it. Firstly, I did um, a, a poll on Twitter, um, basically saying, which one are you looking forward to? Uh, Quatermass, Universal, neither, both. And Quatermass won that by a decent margin, which was, not, I think, nice to see. A to be honest, I was surprised how many votes the Universal film still gets, given how their reboots have gone so far. But maybe that's just my personal take on it. Um, and I was really pleased, because I'm pretty generally against reboots, remakes of any kind. But the Quatermass one, I hope they've put as much thought into this as I have, but I think it's a really good choice for a reboot. That's Because I, I think a, a good reason for rebooting something is when people now don't know it very well and not really inclined to go back and look at the original. Yeah. I also think because it's it has history. Yeah. It, this is the original Quatermass... Uh, the Quatermass Experiment, with no, e with no E on the front of Experiment, which was a remake of a BBC TV show, was that, that's the first proper Hammer Horror film, even before uh, The Curse of Frankenstein. This is what created Hammer Horror and basically saved the studio from bankruptcy. So it's a great point to start again. It's also the case that it's a remake to start with from the BBC thing. Hammer then rebooted it themselves in the 60s with... Um, the Quatermass and the Pit, with a different star, and it's that star. And um, Andrew Keir is the star of that one. That's the one that people mostly think of. And then Hammer didn't do any more with it, but I think BBC again did. Uh, I think just called Quatermass, another TV series with John Mills in the early 70s. So it's something that has a history of being rebooted, and each time it's rebooted, it's apart from that first remake, it's not really a remake. It's them doing something new with it, take and taking this character, I think, in a way that reflects the times in which it was made. Yes. And there's absolutely something that can be done with that character. Which when we were talking about this before, you sort of compared it to... Um, Dr. Dr. Mabusa. Mabusa. Yeah. Which, of course, is very specifically, he's a man of our times, I think was one of the subtitles, that the 1920s Dr. Mabusa is dealing with the uh, rampant consumerism of the 20s and the inflation going on in Germany. In the 30s, it's very much about, um, about the rise of Hitler, fascism. And later on, uh, when he came back to the character, the thousand eyes of Dr. Mabuza has a sort of Orwellian aspect to it. So it, 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 the, the character is reflecting the times. Yeah. And that's interesting. What was interesting, also interesting, I did another quick poll on, or a question on, on Twitter saying, who do you think should play Quatermass? It was interesting how many people chose an ex-Doctor Who. <laughs> and I think people are equating yeah. the characters in interesting ways. Yes. Interesting. Um, who would you have play him? I was, I, you see, I knew you'd ask that. Um, I, have, <laughs> I wish I'd come up with an answer. Um, I, was I was actually surprised. I said there were no women. I'm really surprised someone didn't say Olivia Coleman just because I thought she's getting everything now. And then I thought, Olivia Coleman will be kind of right. Um, people suggested Peter Capaldi. I think he'd be quite good. He might be a little old now. With Quatermass, what you're looking for is he is a sort of a Tweedy scientist, but also a very forceful personality. Professor, Professor Challenger from um, Lost World would be a good comparison. That's the sort of thing you want. You want someone who, who convinces as a scientist, but also is a bit 
robust, has that presence. Yeah. Um, and that's an interesting combination. That's a hard combination to find. Um, yeah, I should have, maybe I should have put more thought into this. Other people suggested Idris Elba's name came up. Yeah. Who I don't, he wouldn't have been my first choice. No, I think he's too butch. Yeah. But then I've never seen him try and play anything like this. For all I know, he'd be very good. Yeah. Oh, what I'm I would sure say about Elba is good he's a very good actor. What I'd say is he's never played a role like that before, which yeah. isn't necessarily a negative thing, but I'd need to see. I'd want him to audition for it. Yeah. I don't know if people ask Idris Elba to audition. But it's, 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 um, it's a really cool part. No, I'm trying okay. to uh, Yeah. All right. And then, then we've got Universal rebooting The, Invisible, um, the Man, Invisible Man, which I think is a terrible choice for a reboot, but they're running out of properties. <laughs> The problem with The Invisible Man is, unlike Dracula and Frankenstein and these, there isn't a history of other people doing it. In the end, if you think of The Invisible Man, it's still you think the James Whale Chase. film. Oh. No, that's the memoirs of The Invisible <laughs> Man. There's only one The Invisible Man horror, really. There are others, but when you think of it, that's the one you think of. Yes. However, it's not The Hollow Man. It's not however many Hollow other... Man is pretty much a reboot, though, isn't it, in many ways? Yeah, yeah same it is. Sort of, it's pretty much the same story. He goes, gets turned mm, invisible, yeah, goes a bit a, mad. But he doesn't get to run out or go on the rampage. He's mostly in a lab for most of it, isn't yeah. he? Yes, he is. Yeah. But... Oh, no, he does get out. He doesn't do too much. He doesn't go far. He goes peaking. I mean, I guess the thing is that the, the, the James Well one, he's out the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, he's just by himself, which I, I think the, the idea that you would have more scientists involved, because I think you want to see those relationships. You see relationships, but I, I don't, I mean, I think that, I think The Invisible Man, the James Well one, is an absolutely fantastic film. Love it. Yeah. And the only reason I'm glad about this reboot, can you guess my only reason for being glad about this reboot? Because they're not rebooting Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, no, although that's a good one. It was that I'd already decided that my next book would be The Invisible Man. So um, <laughs> it won't coincide because I think I'll be done before then. But it might give me some, a few extra sales. Who what are knows? you going to call it? I haven't made up my mind yet. Do you have you got a story? A rough one, more of a theme than a story. I haven't really got the time to work on it at the moment, but I will, I'll probably end up doing it over summer so it goes out for Christmas because I'm setting it at Christmas. Yeah. So I think... It, that might help as well. But they've always, so for the first one went out in October, second one went out in November, so I'll try and keep it around that area. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's not what this is about. This isn't just about plugging my books, which you can buy on Amazon, part of the Universal Library. Um, so, I mean, do you have any thoughts on, on The Invisible? Or do you think this is a good idea? I'm not anti it. Um, How do you feel about Lee Wanell as the director? Good, good choice. I'd rather they hired interesting directors that have got a vision for a film. That's kind of what I'd like to see from a lot of these franchises as they get stale. Is like somebody who's got like a really passionate idea for it. I don't see how that can go wrong. I mean, look, Peter Jackson loved King Kong. Yeah. Uh, so I can't, I can't see what can go wrong with a director who's got a particular passion to tell a story. Yeah. He's not who I would have chosen. He's not who I would have wanted. But I doubt that my vision of the Invisible Man is Universal's. Or Universal. <laughs> Nobody cares about my vision of the Invisible Man anyway. Uh, who should play the Invisible Man? So obviously originally yeah, when matter. they launched the Dark Universe before a single film had been released, it was going to be Johnny Depp. It was. Will... And which was one of the covers of casting I was actually pretty okay with because I think someone slowly going insane kind of plays to his wheelhouse. Yes, so he's playing himself, gets to play himself. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking Idris Elba, David Tennant, <laughs> Peter Capaldi, maybe David, Olivia No, Coleman. David Tennant would be good, though. David, yeah, yeah, joking aside, David Tennant would be a really good David Invisible Tennant Man. David Tennant was very and good, like, as a bad guy, because he was very good in Jessica Jones mm. as the bad guy. I can't wait to see, this is off topic, but I can't wait to see him in Good Omens. Oh, yeah. That's been in the world. That's a TV series, isn't it? They're making it. Uh, yeah, yes. that will be out. I think it's on Netflix. It'll be out in May and then on BBC Two later in the year. Oh, I was going to say, you don't have Netflix. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's coming to BBC Two as well because it's co-production. Yeah. And because it's Terry Pratchett, I'm really looking forward to it. And Neil Gaiman's been heavily involved, so I'm hoping that it will uh, be good. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a film that's sort of been in, as a film, it's been in development for, forever. It's pretty much for 20 plus years because I remember them yeah. talking about it or it getting announced way back when. I know it's been very difficult for Neil Gaiman to, to continue doing this after Pratchett's death because they were so close. And um, 
it was something they really wanted to do and it, it was gutting to him that they couldn't get it done before he died. There used to be this website called um, like the Movie Stock Exchange and you, you basically sort of bought shares in movies. It was just a game, so you weren't actually buying it. You bought shares in movies and then as they sort of released, you'd find out how much they earned. And like if you got in there when a film got announced, then like it's very, you know, it's yeah. worth is very low and as it gets closer to release and then it sort of picks up and i had good omens oh. so still waiting for that one to yeah. pay out <laughs> but going back to um invisible now you've said it because i mean now i've said it and you've said actually that's a good idea david tennant you could put him and claude rains mm. there's an immediate co contrast so that's it um i'll have to put that on twitter but yeah we've <laughs> we, have, yes. we have cast the invisible man yes with david tennant uh, right, our final uh, our final feature is the viewers' channel. So this is something uh, that back in the day we had a channel. Uh, Renoa Super Genius uh, pimped our channel on his channel, sent over, and we had like this big bump in subscribers yeah. and, and views, so very noticeable. Um, and now we're of a size. We're still not big, but we're not as big as, as not Renoa as big was. as he was when we. But anyway, we're of a size now that we. When we see something that our viewers do, we want to give them credit for it. Share our equity. Share share our equity. So such as it is. Our first our, our first one we're going to do is to our friend and neighbour Ben Simpson. Yes, who is uh, a reviewer of of uh, of LP. He's a, he does he does a bit of gaming. He does he collects vinyl. He's got a lot of horror vinyl. And he's also done a couple of retrospectives of all of the video nasty. So he knows his horror and he's also about 12 years old. <laughs> so uh, this I'm going to link to like his countdown of the sort of best 10 video nasties that right. he did. So you can check it out and say that you came over for Dark Corners. Um, but yeah. yeah, but if you've got a channel or a blog that you think we'd like, Pop it down below, yeah, and we might we pick may, yours. Yeah. We may for... pimp yours in the future. Yes. So yeah, check out Ben's channel somewhere around here. Yes, and and say that Dark Corner sent you. Yes, and uh, yeah, that wraps up.